You got caught one time by Board of Justice. Yeah, but we, I wasn't doing anything. I was just chatting with somebody. Else. And you didn't learn any lesson from that. Not, uh, curiosity got the best of me. I, I don't know. I, you could have just uh, you're stopped right. chatting. I could have, yeah. I mean, you're right. I could have. This creepy dude that got caught by Chris Hansen and his team has some of the worst lies that I have ever heard on this show. His backstory is literally hilarious, and you could tell this dude is scrambling from the jump. But I don't want to spoil too much. Make sure you watch until the very end and leave a like if you enjoyed these videos. Anyways, let's get into another classic TCAP episode reaction. My name is Grim. Let's get it. They have to make up this story on the spot. And when you have to make up a story uh, that quickly, you know, it can sometimes be difficult to, to ad lib. So what Chris is saying in this intro, and yes, we will be kind of jumping into this one because this is from the Unseen Tapes series. So it's a little bit more uncut with these interviews, but they don't really show the approach of the guys walking into the house. We're just going to see him sat down with Chris Hansen right away. But just judged off this intro Chris Hansen has given us, I'm assuming this dude is going to have some pretty stupid lies, like just ready, or I guess not ready because he was not expecting to walk into a uh, police sting with Chris Hansen being at the helm of it. But yeah, we all know this. Everybody that I've seen on this show so far has some pretty goofy lies it's hard to cover up for what you're doing especially as you're sat in this house talking to chris hansen and he has your chat logs right in front of him and why do you think it's okay for a 39 year old to come visit a, a 13 year old it's not then why do you do i don't know i've never done it before so really Seriously. Bro is literally three times the age of the person he was just talking to. He showed up to this person's house in the middle of the night while he thought their parents were gone and they were home alone. And he also brought along a little bit of juice, if you know what I'm saying. A little bit of lemonades. I'm sure you can deduce what I'm trying to imply there. But this dude is pretty much caught red-handed. And I gotta say, you should never judge a book by its cover. But this dude just looks like a creep, all right? I I'm gonna say it. Do you uh, have a plan for tonight? No, not really. I mean, there was no, no definite plan. She kept saying something about or so whatever, and I told her I wasn't coming up there to hook up or whatever. I was just coming up there to hang out with her to talk to her. And the guy says he doesn't have a plan, even though, again, he showed up with certain items in hand that are very clearly there for one reason, all right? This dude definitely had a plan in mind. He can act like he's so aloof, and it was just happenstance that he happened to show up at this house in the middle of the night. And he's also tossing around the classic lie that this is his first time doing this. Kind of fast, honestly. This dude is speed running through the excuses already. Let's hear the next one, dude. What do you got in the bag there? She asked me to bring some of that, so for her mom because she said she's drinking some of her mom's coolers or something. For her mom. And before it's revealed that this dude drove like four or five hours like these other creeps, that would have been freaking hilarious. I, I don't actually know how far he had to drive for this house, but in his own words, he claims there was never any plans of anything going on. You know, it's just kind of normal that a guy would show up to somebody's house who's a third of his age in the middle of the night while their parents are gone just to hang out, you know? Totally normal Friday night activity if you ask me. Sarcasm, of course, I have to say that because there are actually some YouTubers who would probably see that as a casual Friday night out. I'm not gonna name any names, but you know there's been some scandals but i have to preface that i am freaking joking guys all right i'm into cougars my girlfriend herself is like three years older than me don't get it twisted she said that she wanted me to bring some of those for her she likes them well she was drinking the ones out of her mom's refrigerator for her i mean so i guess i guess we need to replace them and we have the first flat or not first lie but the first obvious lie here this guy did bring some coolers with him and his excuse as to why he has this with him he was just being a nice friend to this person see they were the ones who were sneaking some of their parents out of the fridge while they were gone and he just got that so they can be replaced and the parents would be none the wiser of what was happening all right and now this dude is fighting with chris over what was said when again chris has a packet full of information exactly showing what was said this decoy explicitly asked that he bring this like specific brand and that's the exact brand he brought I don't know whether he thought that up in the two-hour drive there, whether that was right off the top of his head, but that's what he was going with. He stuck with that story till the bitter end. If it was off the top of his head, I gotta admit, it's actually not as bad as he was hyping it up to be. I mean, it is kind of a believable lie, probably not. Uh, I, I would say it's like a 7% believable lie, which is way higher percentage than some of these other idiots. I mean, some of the crap coming out of their mouths, you can just tell, obviously that's not the case. Yes, this dude is lying, but that still would have been a slightly plausible explanation. I mean, I'm sure some other dude would have been like, actually, I was walking in and I saw it on the front doorstep and I, I figured I'd bring in their delivery. I thought maybe they got some sort of, uh, you know, delivery from a store that they, they brought it out to their house and they didn't know it was there. I, I was just trying to make sure no one else stole it. So yeah, I, I didn't buy it, but also don't check my wallet. I don't have a receipt or anything in there. <laughs> Please. Can I go, by the way? <laughs> you ask her, have you ever for the guy before? Yeah, one time. When was that? How was it? So you think you can handle yourself then with an older man? I 
I'm just making conversations. And the way these dudes try to play off their straight up freaky raunchy chats as just being normal conversation is hilarious to me. I'm sorry, the average person does not engage in these conversations with randoms on the internet to the level that these guys are going. And I'm just gonna try to do, you know, a little bit of prediction here. I'm gonna say this is one of those dudes who tries to pin it on role playing and saying that he knew this person was not actually the age they were. They were just, you know, engaged in some make believe play pretend type stuff on the internet, which would not fly obviously as an excuse either. But I'm predicting this dude is gonna say that later on in this video. He just seems like the type. You seem a little worried in this uh, internet conversation about the possibility of her being a cop. You know, I, I can feel strange when I, you know, talk to people like online because you don't know who they are. You know? <laughs> That's normal too, man. Hey, some people just have a fear of law enforcement. You know, it's not like he was doing anything illegal. He was, but we'll look past that stage. Uh, he just simply didn't want to be conversating with a cop without knowing it. And we all know that classic stoner law that doesn't actually exist. If you're a police officer and I ask you, you got to tell me it's the law. I'm sure he thought he was working some of that magic. So as soon as the decoy said, no, I'm not a cop <laughs> or whatever their crappy response was from, uh, you know, the PG justice company that he works with that's actually conversing with these guys he just probably ate that up and was like all right sweet i'm in the clear <laughs> let's go online because you don't know who they are you know so well she pretty much said who she is she said she wasn't a cop or anything like that that's right she kept asking me the same thing and i said no <laughs> he literally just said it dude oh my god i am in the mind of the moron right now literally i'm sharing the same two brain cells this dude has and uh we're struggling to think of any better thoughts other than well she's not a cop she said so and uh She's replying to me, so maybe I should show up to this house and ruin my life. That was literally this dude's thought process before showing up here. As long as he could check off that whole cop thing, he thought he was good to go. You say I got caught. Well, there was like an online uh, detective or whatever that was roaming the chat rooms or whatever. And shocker, shocker, this dude has been caught before. So in fact, the first thing he said when he showed up to Chris for this interview, saying that this was his first time is easily disproven. I'm not sure if it was with the company that Chris was working with or whatever, but it sounds like this guy almost got caught. I don't think he actually showed up to the house, but he was able to realize that he was speaking to a decoy and somebody faking being, you know, a third of his age. I don't know what group it was or whatever. She didn't give me a group's name. Did justice. Yeah, I think so. So you got caught one time by to justice. Yeah, but we, I wasn't doing anything. I was just chatting with somebody. Else. Yeah, but uh, I wasn't doing anything just like I'm not doing anything right now. It was just pure talk, pure chatting. Uh, you know, that's it. <laughs> that's the most idiotic excuse these dudes regularly use. And yes, actually, it was confirmed. He was almost caught by, you know, P Justice, the company that works with Chris Hansen for these videos and for this series overall. But again, it sounds like he was kind of able to fish out the fact that they were a decoy before he actually showed up to the house. I have no idea how persecutable or whatever the word is for that. I think when you're just speaking on the internet is terrible enough, but it's probably kind of tough in the eye of the law to get you on anything. But the fact that he's sitting here in the house now shows that he is still acting on these impulses and just needs to be kept away from society. How long ago did this happen? Uh, a month ago or so. So a month ago, you got caught. Well, I didn't say I got caught. She just said that um, talking to somebody who said they were underage. Yeah. And I mean, you'd think if you're doing something so terrible like these guys are doing that could land you in jail for a long time and ruin your life completely as it is, you'd think you'd kind of back off after you get almost caught in some sort of sting. That has to be the most terrifying situation for these dudes. But no, this guy was back at it a month later. And again, I always say this, it shows how compulsive this is for these dudes to where they can't even control their impulse to want to do this. They just log on to the computer, the access is there, and they're going to be chatting with people they should not be. Don't take that as me having sympathy for them either. I just think it is crazy how easy it is for these guys to go back to their old ways. And again, that's why I think they need to be locked up and throw away the key because the access is just there always. And if anything, as time goes on, it gets easier and easier for these dudes to do terrible things on the internet. Um, Talking to somebody who said they were underage. Yeah. And you didn't learn any lesson from that. Not really. Did you send her any pictures? <laughs> and the dude's really having a moment of self-reflection here as Chris is like, dude, you, you didn't learn anything from that. You, you didn't even want to try to change your life and not do this terrible act. At least the guy realizes he's a scumbag, though. I guess that's the best we can hope for. And what was on your little window? What kind of yeah. pictures? Pictures of me. What kind of pictures? I make my face. Pictures of my... Pictures of... Well, not necessarily... Yes, but yeah, pictures of... 
<laughs> oh my god he's one of those oh my god so yeah he's trying to skirt past this question chris is asking him what kind of pictures he sent to that last chatter that he almost got caught with and he's like oh just pictures of me you know it's on that little uh on the little messages there it's like a little square image and he's really trying to press for what type of image he finally realizes yes it is a picture of an eggplant but it's not his eggplant it's someone else's on the internet that probably is way more impressive than his microscopic one i'm presuming because i mean why would you go out on your own time to find other ones that you can send to people i mean this dude probably has a folder of his favorite looking ones Nothing. so it's just all role playing well basically that's what being online is isn't it i mean you could be someone you're somebody that you're not normally in, in, in person or life or in your social life or whatever you're just and despite him sitting here with chris anson where it is a reality he is here physically in all three dimensions he says yes it was all role play it was all chats it's just me talking you know on the internet i'm just freaky like that and i like to talk with people who i assume are also role playing it's just such a bogus excuse man lock this dude up please take him away well scott there's a couple things you need to know one is that i'm chris hansen with dateline nbc and we're doing a story <laughs> And on the way out, this dude even impulsively thinks, should I grab these? They were kind of expensive. You know, the drinks on the side here. But no, he actually does leave by himself. I think he assumes he's getting away scot-free. He doesn't really know who Chris Hansen is at this point. He thinks he might be law enforcement, whatever. But then the reveal happens and this dude just dips. So yeah, he even said himself, curiosity got the best of him. I think it's a little bit more than curiosity. I think it's you being a true and utter monster. But yeah, he gets arrested and they have him interviewed in front of this trailer here in like a Walmart or Home Depot parking lot. Kind of a weird setup. But even with the cop here in the end, he's like, yeah, it's all just talk. It's all just chat, bro. Being so casual about it. Hopefully they weren't as casual about it in the courtroom where they where they I really hope so, where I really hope they just threw the book at this guy and he got locked away for a long time. But yeah, I think that about does it for this one. <laughs> Another classic episode reaction. I love when these dudes just make up the most wild stories. Honestly, his was a little bit more grounded than I thought in this intro, just based off of like what Chris Hansen was saying and all. But let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. Thank you to everybody who's been showing support on the videos. Should have another big ad episode app for you next later this week and shout out to the patreon as always i will catch you guys in the next one and until next time peace out